We ordered the Among Us potion from the dark web. And supposedly, when you drink this Among Us potion at 3 a.m., you turn into the imposter from Among Us. Editing Terry here. Just before I begin the video, I just want to show this awesome redesign of Fee inspired by my Skyward Sword rewrite by Artist Hope YouTube on Instagram. I'm in love with what they've done, and I'm so honored to have art like this from you guys. So do remember to go follow Artist Hope YouTube. I hope I'm saying that right. And lastly, if you ever comment and I don't respond, YouTube doesn't let me reply sometimes. I reply and then my comment disappears. So if you ever want to contact me, then my Insta, TikTok, and Twitter are all open. All right, thank you so much once again, and enjoy the video. Hi, I'm El Mushtari, and I'm never doing that intro again. It's exclusive. I'm sorry I haven't posted in a couple months. I was kind of going through, like, the king of burnouts or something. I also recorded this video once before. It was meant to be with me on screen, but I didn't like how it came out. So I kind of burned out all over again, if that makes sense. I've gained enough motivation to redo this video just in the normal audio style for now. So, My Little Pony G5 and the mess that it is. The villain especially and her shallow nature really worry me. I don't know if this series is going to get good in season 2 kinda like Steven Universe did. The characters aren't very appealing, the story isn't very good, I'm not saying I could do any better, but also I feel like G4 took itself a tiny tiny bit more seriously. G4 didn't have technology and iPhones and all that. Seriously, I don't understand the inclusion of iPhones and social media in My Little Pony right now. I was a kid when G4 came out, so maybe I'm a little biased. But G5 already kind of feels dated, and it just started. The main issue to me is the villain, Opaline. She's the literal villain stereotype of just wanting enough power to be able to take over the world. That's kind of the most basic villain motivation you can get. It can work depending on how you do it, but they haven't done it well, so far at least. Also, her design is bad. I'm just gonna say it. Look at those colors. There are multiple things here to rewrite. I won't be including Opaline or her assistant Misty in this rewrite at all. I'll be changing around the setting and the whole backstory to the gems. And in saying that, I mean there won't be gems. I don't really like MacGuffins, and it feels like Twilight Sparkle wouldn't just make gems for whatever reason. If you remember, Twilight could be a little bit unhinged and paranoid in G4. So that's what me- <laughs> Me rewrite? Ah, g -g 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 Spongebob me boy! So, that so that's what my rewrite relies on. I wrote a description of the world, so I'll just go ahead and read that out now. 10,000 years ago, an alicorn named Twilight Sparkle reigned alongside her friends, the Elements of Harmony. When they passed, she went into despair. She tried to handle all conflicts herself until eventually, she came to the conclusion that magic was the source of all evil, and that she was the only pony fit to handle it. She began to siphon all of Equestria's magic to make sure it would never cause destruction again. The other alicorns, Celestia, Luna, Cadence, and Flurry Heart came to stop her, but she wouldn't listen to reason. In a struggle, she accidentally killed her mentor, sending her deeper into desperation and further convincing her that magic was the root of all issues. She managed to take away magic from the remaining alicorns except for one, her niece, Flurry Heart. Flurry Heart managed to defeat Twilight, turning her into a constellation using the remainder of her magic to keep Twilight from making a return. Without magic, Equestria fell into chaos. The Alicorns were assumed to have the magic, and so they were hunted down by angry citizens and went into hiding. 10,000 years later, civilizations have reformed. Not Alicorns nor magic have been seen since, and with nobody to control the daily cycle, the sun and the moon have quickly become a memory, leaving ponies to have to quickly create technology to take over its role. You're just gonna have to suspend your disbelief for that one. Equestria is chaotic and dystopian in comparison to the world of years ago, with strict or no police forces, corrupt leaders, and a slow advance in industrial technology. Many ponies live in poor conditions in their grey cities, some of which are overrun by crime. Named by her historian father, Sunny Star Scout is a small ray of hope to all ponies in a cold, stormy, and rundown city of Maritime Bay. She loves studying constellations through her telescope. Her personal favorite is the haunting Twilight Sparkle constellation. As silly as it seems, sometimes Sunny feels that when she looks at the constellation, it's looking right back at her. It feels like magic. But it's all in her head, of course. Magic isn't real. It's an ancient myth, right? So yeah, that's what happened to the world. Twilight Sparkle took away almost all magic to try and ensure the safety of Equestria. 
Sunny is still our main character, and she has a relationship with Twilight only in the way of how Twilight is a constellation that she's been looking at for a long time. That last sentence in the description about her feeling like the constellation is looking back at her obviously foreshadows the fact that Twilight is looking back at her. To kick off the series, this would take up season 1 and 2, I think. Twilight Sparkle would return, and the magic she took with her. I think it would be dispersed into Equestria randomly so that everyone kinda regains magic for the first time in 10,000 years, instead of having a whole movie to retrieve gems and get the magic back. Upon her return, Twilight would be hoping to see Equestria having flourished after her removal of magic. But obviously, she sees that the sun hasn't come up in years, everyone's suffering, and most communities are corrupt and withering away. And she realizes in her paranoid and isolated state of mind, that maybe it isn't magic that was hurting Equestria. Maybe Equestria was just broken from the beginning. So, Twilight Sparkle resolves to destroy the entirety of life on Equestria. Not in an evil mwahahaha way, but in a sad, resigned way. She thinks that trying to reset Equestria and letting it start anew is better than trying to rehabilitate it again with taking away magic, or at least that's how she saw it. But Twilight, with her stolen magic having dispersed back into Equestria, is no longer strong enough to destroy everyone, so she temporarily covers all of Equestria in snow. Also, when she and Sunny first meet, she thinks that Sunny is going to help her out. She knows that Sunny is a good person from all the years she's watched her, and she thinks that her plan is also going toward the greater good, but obviously Sunny disagrees. I don't know how it's going to pan out, but Twilight, at some point, manages to trick Sunny into taking magic for herself. Not in a malicious way. Think the whole balancing Etheria thing with She-Ra. Adora believes that connecting the princesses to their stones will help with the planet. Will help with the planet. Help the planet. But instead, she almost destroys it with her sword. I imagine sort of the same thing. You know how Sunny turns into an alicorn in G5? It's that, except she's being used to destroy the world and she doesn't want to be an alicorn. I imagine it would also be pretty traumatic as well. Lastly, Sunny represents the element of hope as same with the canon. Anyways, on to the rest of main five. Once again, I'm not going to be adding Misty in, she's just Opaline's henchman, so it doesn't count. So, Sunny's best friends would be Hitch Trailblazer and Izzy Moonbow. Instead of calling them Hitch and Izzy though, they'll be called Trailblazer and Moonbow. This is because there are just too many I sounds in the main five. Pip, Zip, Hitch, Izzy. Sheriff Hitch Trailblazer is a stallion trying his best to protect his city in a corrupt world. Though he appears large and scary, he has a gentle soul that appeals to the small animals trying to survive in Maritime Bay. Unlike the rest of Equestria, his sense of justice is like nobody else's. He only wishes it would spread. Trailblazer would be the most responsible of the main five alongside Zip. He'd be like a big cuddly bear. I made his colors a little too radioactive looking here, maybe that fits since Equestria is all screwed up, but I do correct his palette to be a little bit paler when I draw him to be an alicorn. Yeah, Trailblazer is the series alicorn. We've never had a male alicorn, and also he's already a sheriff with everyone's best interests at heart. So I think he'd be a great leader as well. Sunny definitely wouldn't want to be the main five's alicorn, plus that would be the same kind of thing as Twilight. Trailblazer is more prepared to rule Equestria. I find it really strange that he's the only person in the main five who doesn't have his own special element. It's literally so easy to assign justice to him. So yeah, that's his element, justice. Zip and Pip are the princesses of Zephyr Heights, a kingdom found high up in the mountains. Their mother, Queen Haven, barely rules, as most of the decisions are made by the kingdom's council. The royal family are reduced to popular and iconic figureheads. Little sister Pip enjoys the attention, able to mostly blissfully ignore the corruption of the council. Zip, however, hates being kept in the dark about what's going on with her kingdom and resorts to sneaking around, chewing from events, and eavesdropping to gain knowledge. Pegasi wings aren't strong enough to hold them up, but they provide Zip with the extra speed she needs to be elusive. She also enjoys learning about the history of Equestria, though the information is obscure and rare to come by, though Pip believes it's all legend. The sisters' views on ignorance are polar opposites, so their relationship hasn't been amicable in years. Sometimes they feel as if the only thing that holds them together is their love for their people. So yeah, Zip would be the element of curiosity while Pip would be the element of influence. I wouldn't outright go make her an influencer on horse Instagram, because that's just silly and it will become dated eventually. But instead, she'd be someone who could lead others easily. Pip wouldn't be a shallow person who likes views and attention alone. She'd enjoy leading actual projects. So in G5, she's a singer, so like maybe she'd be something like that here too. As for Zip, she's mainly the same as in the real G5, but less Rainbow Dash-like. 
I gave the Pegasi smaller bodies because, you know, they need to be able to fly, but obviously they still can't right now without magic. And I also gave them bird's tails rather than horse hair to make them more distinct. Their ears are also feathered just to make them look interesting. And I made Pip less purple so Moonbow would be the purple one of the group. These two would stay princesses at Zephyr Heights, or at least Pip would, because she would actually be a good leader due to the whole influence thing. I think Zip would be a detective at the end, just like she is in the real series. Anyways, on to Sunny's other best friend, who also lives in Maritime Bay, Moonbow. In my version, the whole divide between types of ponies doesn't really exist. It's that most ponies just live where the majority of their species is. Everyone knows that nobody actually has magic, so there's no reason to be afraid. Moonbow is Maritime Bay's best crafts pony. Making stylish clothes, accessories, and other kinds of needlework at affordable prices, she is beloved by those less well off in the community. Her and Sunny Star Scout live together in the latter's observatory. Moonbow is over optimistic and sometimes naive but well meaning. Not everything can be solved with her creations, but there is no stopping her from trying. The horn on her head may be just for show, but for show is not always a bad thing to Moonbow. So yeah, I didn't want Moonbow to be Pinkie Pie all over again with her randomness, so I just had her be over optimistic but clumsy until it comes to her crafts. I imagine that she uses her crafts to help with the adventures, so she'd be able to like set up traps, not that she's trapping anything. And all that kinda like simple machinery? She's the type to make one of those ridiculous domino effect machines that I always see on YouTube shorts. In terms of body type, that wasn't something that really got played with in G4 because of the type of animation they were using. But seeing as this one is 3D, I think it would be fun to make Moonbow rounder than the others. I don't know if it worked since I am drawing a horse at the end of the day, but it would be cool to see different looking ponies. To end it off, Moonbow would be the element of creativity. I think my version of the show would have a lot darker of an atmosphere than G4, and certainly a lot darker of an atmosphere than G5. I understand that G5 is a kid's show, but I was a kid not too long ago myself when G4 came out, or you know, however long ago that was, and I still found it interesting. It felt like there were, you know, stakes. The new villain is all just, you know, more ha ha ha, I want power. Not even Nightmare Moon, the first G4 villain, was that shallow. She was jealous of nobody enjoying her nighttime, but everyone enjoying her sister's daytime. I imagine that she felt left out. At the very least, Nightmare Moon had a good design. So yeah, that's been my rewrite, or maybe just a redesign of G5. If you like this video, then you're very cool and you're very awesome, and I'm making four statues in your honor, and then if you didn't, 